Hi guys. So this is not really my style of video, but um, I just thought maybe um, I would document this historic moment that's getting lost in the shuffle. There's been a lot of hurricanes and North Korea stuff, so maybe the fact that the United States just put its first permanent base in Israel got lost in the shuffle. That's kind of a historic moment, so thought I would document it since not a whole lot of people are talking about it. So, um, a couple of things that I wanted to point out from this article, which is from the Washington Post, is that this new base is located within an existing Israeli Air Force base and it will operate under Israeli military directives. So that's United States troops operating under Israeli military directives. And then I thought this is interesting about what's going on at that base. Israel's multi-tier missile defense system includes the Arrow, designed to intercept long-range ballistic missiles in the stratosphere with an eye on Iran, of course, and the Iron Dome, which defends against short-range rockets from the Gaza Strip, and David's Sling, which is meant to counter the type of medium-range missiles possessed by Iranian-backed Hezbollah militants, of course. So I thought that's an interesting breakdown of what's going on at that base. And basically this article concludes with, you know, describing Israel's worry that Iran and its proxy Hezbollah will establish long-term presence in Syria near the Israeli border. I was looking for like a little bit more information on this historic event and for uh, my friends who are into numbers I thought it would be interesting to note that when this um, historic event occurred on September 18th um, the site we're opening is referred to as Site 883 Life Support Area. I don't know if that's like a typical naming. This is the first time the United States has a base in Israel, so it doesn't seem like there should be a typical naming of sites, but this one is named 883 Life Support Area. Let's watch this gentleman describe it, I think. He says it here. Tell you it's really an honor to be here as we dedicated and cut the ribbon for Site 883, the Life Support Area. You know, by participating in today's ceremony, we mark the opening of this Life Support Area by the United States and Israeli armies. But more importantly, this symbolizes the strong bond that exists between the United States and Israel. Yes, it does. So, yeah, that's an interesting name for a site. And let's see what else this article has to offer. Oh, I found this curious as an ending to the article. They just throw in, one of Israel's operational Iron Dome systems is now in the U.S., whereas competing with U.S. proposed systems for an interim and possibly longer term solution to the medium and short range air defense requirement. So that's cool. Um, I guess I, I kind of point out that paragraph because it's a really confusing way to end an article. And also because I'm not quite sure what they're trying to convey. As I understand it, it seems like they're saying that an Israeli defense company is now competing for US defense contracts. Um, the thing that I don't understand about that is 
like we give Israel hundreds of millions of dollars in aid I mean let me see if I have like an article that can show yeah I mean just last year this is September of last year the US agreed to this 38 billion dollar military aid program so it's uh, it's interesting that the US would then be buying military technology from Israel but you guys can leave in the comments maybe explain to me how that works to the US's benefit I mean the US gives Israel more aid than the rest of the world combined as I understand it and correct me if I'm wrong again in the comments but um, again I just uh, wanted to point out some things that I'm not totally understanding about the deal it seems like we have now this proposal for Israeli systems to be protecting US land and then we have US troops in Israel operating under Israeli directives so it just seems like you know there's a lot of <clears throat> Israeli um, crossover happening here if you guys want to know more about this dome this iron dome I found this little video that has a quick description of it the iron dome works by identifying the threat launching an interceptor missile guiding it to the threat and exploding the interceptor near enough to eliminate it it's a series of easily transportable units with a firing control, radar, and portable missile launcher. Because of its size and comparably low cost, it can be moved quickly and used often. It is by far the best strategic defense system for eliminating short-range targets. But the system does have its critics. They are... Okay, well, the system has its critics. But just that's a good description of how it works. And then as far as, like, the short-term range... If you want to see more about the specifics on that, this is just the wiki page. And I'm not sure, like, how accurate or up-to-date this is regarding the Iron Dome system. But it's said to be an interceptor that destroys short-range rockets and artillery shells fired from ranges of 4 kilometers, which is 2.5 miles, to 70 kilometers, which is 43 miles. So, I'm, I mean... If the U.S. is looking at purchasing this system, I'm not sure if we're planning on being attacked by Mexico or Canada. But I just don't understand why we're buying interceptors at this range and why we're considering buying them from Israel rather than U.S. contractors if we need them at all, which I don't think we need. I mean, it's possible again that this is just another example of you and me going to work every day to fund a military industrial complex run by Zionists but I could be wrong I mean let me know your thoughts on how all this works again it's the United States giving Israel all of this money which then they use to go ahead and create systems that they're going to sell to us. So I just don't, I mean, maybe I'm not understanding how the process works. You guys can enlighten me in the comments. That would be great. But I just thought it was a historic moment because the United States has put their first permanent base in Israel and they are our partners and we're solidifying our relationship and so I wanted to document that moment since everyone else maybe is caught up in the hurricanes and the North Korea commotion because nobody's really talking about it so let me know your thoughts and talk to you guys later